Oh, good morning. It's me, Kenny Polcari, and today is Monday, July 25th, 2022, and here's what you need to know. Oh, yes, it is going to be a big week. Earnings, we got about 150 of them coming. Macro data points and the Fed all in one week. Treasuries remain inverted, but Yellen says, don't worry, we're not in a recession, nor are we going one. See, yesterday's Meet the Press. Oil remains in the $87, $100 trading range while natural gas continues to spike higher. China tells Pelosi to stay home. What will she do now? And where is Joey in all of this? Right now it is a conundrum, so let's see how that plays out. And what are we having for dinner tonight? Well, it's summertime. Turn on the grill because we're going to have a grilled pizza and it is delish. So stocks ended lower on Friday, right? But they did gain on the week. Weak earnings reports being blamed for the Friday move. The Dow losing 140 points or four tenths of a percent. The S&P falling 38 points or almost 1%. The NASDAQ lost 225 points or nearly 2%. The Russell gave up 30 points or 1.6% and the transports lost 55 points or just under a half a percent. Analysts going back and forth about whether the bottom is in or not. Some say yes, while others can su continue to suggest no. Now, what you need to do is define what that means because some would say, myself included, that the bottom is in, right? That the worst of this sell-off might be over. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to test that level again, right, in the weeks ahead. For me, it's S&P 3640, which was 3640-ish, uh, right? That level that we tested back in June. I actually think it's like 3600 and a round number. Now, for others, it's a different number. For example, Morgan Stanley thinks that we're going to be S&P 3600 by year end, but not before testing S&P 3100 before now and then. Bank of America thinks that we could test 3,000. And if we do, investors should then back up the truck. Now, let's be honest, 3,000? I mean, is it possible? Sure, it's possible. Is it realistic? I'm not so sure. But if the Fed completely screws it up, I guess anything is possible and it's all on the table. The action being driven by the same factors, right? The weakening earnings and the more concerning weakening forward guidance that is probably going to cause third and fourth quarter earnings estimates to have to be revised lower. And I don't think the market's taken that into account yet. Persistently high inflation, putting us on the verge of a recession, even while Janet Yellen told us on Meet the Press yesterday, oh, no, don't worry about it. We're nowhere near a recession. So all this talk of a recession is doing nothing but causing angst and confusion. Okay, Janet. Then we have the ongoing war in Ukraine, the dramatic central bank policy moves, think rising rates, weakening macro data around the world. And now you can toss in political uncertainty in Italy, the UK, and now even in the United States. All as reasons for market uncertainty and volatility. Toss in the confusion in the energy markets with oil declining in value while natural gas and coal continue to surge as winter approaches and Europe prepares to deal with less supply of both oil and natural gas coming from Russia. So it all makes some sense, right? Some will say, ah, but don't worry. Just look at the improved sentiment. The indexes are up over the past three weeks. Earnings reports have not been horrible, right? Forward guidance is cautious, and rightly so. But that does not seem to derail investors at all. And while I agree that it feels a bit better... There is still lots of data and earnings to deal with. In addition to the many earnings reports that we're going to have this week, we also have the FOMC meeting, where we're going to fully expect a 75 basis point rate increase, right? But what investors are going to be listening to even more intently is what Jay says during the press conference on Wednesday afternoon. How is he now projecting that forward guidance? And then we have all the eco data, and there is a lot of it this week. We're going to get housing price data. We're going to get new home sales, pending home sales, both expected to be weaker. Mortgage apps, only weaker as rates are going up, and rates are going up 75 basis points this week. Durable goods, capital goods ordered, and capital goods shipped. We're going to get the revision in second quarter GDP, which is supposed to make uh, a stunning turnaround, right? Going from negative 1.6 to a positive uh, half a percent. I'm not really sure uh, how that really works, right? That's convenient and confusing, uh, that the G, that the uh, the gross national gross uh, uh, domestic product could make that kind of a turnaround, but let's see. 
And then on Friday, we're going to get the PCE deflator, right? The Fed's preferred inflation gauge, and that is expected to rise by nine-tenths of a percent month over month and 6.7 year over year. Both levels that are higher than last month, and that's going to confirm what we heard in both the CPI and the PPI. But then you ask, hasn't the market already discounted so much of this? The answer to that is yes and no. It's priced in what we know, but it, ha but, uh, but it is not priced in those surprise events. And that, that's what it always does in uh, price in, are surprise events that are lurking just in the, in the uh, future. And we might see some of those this week, right? We're about to get hit with 150 earnings reports this week. And they include some of the big tech heavyweights, right? Apple, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, now Meta, and Google. In addition, look for results from Archer Daniels, General Electric, Coca-Cola, Pulte Ohms, uh, Kimberly, uh, Kimberly Clark, Juniper Networks, Boeing, Bristol Myers, Waste Management, Sherwin Williams, Hilton, uh, T Mobile, Qualcomm, and Etsy, and the list goes on. What will these companies say about the State of the Union in the U.S. as well as around the world? What will the strong dollar do to these international earnings? What will guidance look like? And what will happen to estimates for the next six months? Because this will determine the pace and rate of revised uh, uh, revisions to earnings. Uh, to earnings estimates by analysts in the in the weeks and the months ahead, right, for the third and fourth quarter. Now, on a side note, remember that our friends at Goldman Sachs cut the estimates on Apple at the beginning of the month. Analyst Rod Hall is making the argument that we could see a 42% drop in Apple if the economic slowdown proves to be greater than expected, calling for Apple to trade as low as $82 a share if that happens. Now look, Apple was trading at $134 when he made the call. It's now trading at $154, up 18%. He also went ranting about a bunch of other, a bunch of other tech stocks. Uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprises estimating a 48% downside risk. That stock is also up 17% since the call, but it is still down 14% year to date. Now, none of this should cause you to panic, but it should cause you to remain awake. Wednesday is setting up to be the most important day this week because that is when we're going to get the next FOMC rate decision and their forward guidance. A 75 base point hike is priced in. This is after the 100 basis point panic that dominated the conversation post the CPI and PPI reports earlier in the month. What will Jay say about September, the future? Are we getting another 75 base points? Or is he willing to say that his plan is working so he can release the break a bit? And if he does, what will investors think about that? Will they think he's right or wrong? And then how will they react? Now, what's also getting lost in the conversation is what's the Fed doing about that $9 trillion balance sheet? Remember, they were supposed to be reducing it by $45 billion a month through August and then ramping it up to $95 billion beginning in September. Where are we on that? Notice how that part of the conversation has quietly been pushed to the back burner. No one's really discussing it, which is also a bit curious, though. No? So somebody should be discussing that. And maybe Jay Powell will talk about that on Wednesday. We at least hope he'll talk about that on Wednesday that some journalists will, will know enough to ask him the question. Surprise events that include further weakening earnings guidance, which is going to cause even bigger downward revisions and estimates, weakening macro data, more hawkish commentary coming from the Fed, as well as the Bank of England, the ECB, uh, that's going to force global interest rates higher, because we can see where that's going. You saw that last week with the ECB, right? Recall that inflation in this country is running at 9.1%, although some would argue it's higher, myself included. In the UK, it's running at near 10%, while across the Eurozone, it's better than 9%. And central bank policies remain well below inflation levels, meaning interest rates versus inflation. There, there's a complete disconnect. Treasury yields across the curve remain inverted. That's not good. Oil is holding steady at $96 a barrel, leaving it in between that $87 and $100 trading range. Natural gas, though, is up 55% this month alone, which calls for further upside as winter approaches the Northern Hemisphere, right? And Europe has to deal with how they're going to heat their homes with the, with the lower supply expected to come from Russia. This morning, U.S. futures are up, reversing themselves from losses seen overnight. Dow futures are up 130, S&P's up 20, the Nasdaq's ahead by 70, and the Russell's gaining 11 points. The reversal being credited to the excitement building over the slew of earnings due out this week. As of this morning, 21% of the S&P has reported, and 70% of those reports have beaten the expectations. So what will this week bring? 
Is it going to bring that same percentage? Is it going to get better? Is it going to get worse? In addition, the cautious guidance has not derailed desire. Investors are smartening up and they're putting to money, they're putting their money to work strategically, right? On themes. Yesterday, the Chinese foreign ministry uh, made it clear to the Biden administration that Nancy Pelosi has no business going to Taiwan. And if she does, the rhetoric is suggesting that we could see a possible military response. Now that's interesting, but not unexpected. China's been making noise about taking Taiwan back. Will Nancy's trip be the catalyst that ignites that fire? While the market's not paying attention to this headline right now, expect that to change if she goes, because now she will put China into, into a position to respond. And the response will do nothing more but create angst, right? So think some of those semiconductor names and other tech and those semiconductor names are slated to be under some pressure today. Now, they had a nice move the last week. So taking some off the table maybe is not necessarily wrong for the trader types. But watch Nancy Pelosi's trip. European markets, which began the day weaker, have all turned positive in the last hour or so. German business climate uh, index for July fell to 88.6, the lowest level in two years. You can blame skyrocketing oil prices and expected natural gas shortages in Europe. But this is still simmering on the back burner. The current focus is on earnings and central bank policy statements. At 6.30, European markets were all up by about a half of 1%. Uh, and now at, at uh, closer to 9 o'clock, they're up closer to one full percent. The S&P closed at 39.61 after trading as high as 39.38, as, uh, as low as 39.38, and as high as 4,012. We remain above the trend line at 39.20 and would look for that to offer support on any move lower. If we rally, then look for some resistance at 4,000. If we push up and through that, then the intermediate trend line becomes resistance at 41.30. We need to close the gap created on June 10th, which means the S&P has to trade up to 4,018 in order to do this. It tried it on Friday and it failed. Will that happen today? Not likely, uh, just because that's a big move. But keep your eyes on that level. If it, if it closes it, then it's going to be a reason to see the market make further gains. If we keep failing, then that suggests a test lower first. We still have three weeks left in the earnings season, and we have uh, the Fed announcement in two days, a lot of, with a lot of economic data points in between, right? So it is going to be an interesting week. In any event, what's for dinner? Okay, so it's summertime, right? You're going to light your grill, but the grill can be used for other things than barbecue, and grilled pizza is just one of those things. It's fun. Everyone can join in. You can create what you want, right? Once you cook it up on the grill, you're going to find that as a completely different texture and taste, right? It seems to come out lighter, crispier, and crunchy. I mean, it is delicious, and you can create whatever you want. Now, when you're doing your pizza on the grill, uh, there are so many things that you can make, right? You can. The only important key, though, here is whatever you decide to use, make sure that you have it ready to go. So you set it up out on the outdoor table, so that as you lay out the dough, you get, your stuff is right there, you get ready to make the pizza real quick, you're not running around looking for things, right? You need a wooden pizza peel, which is that wooden pizza uh, you know, the, the, the thing you put the dough on, right? It's called the pizza peel. Uh, you need the dough and you need all the toppings of your choice. Today, uh, I'm, we're using everything from the garden. So we need fresh garden tomatoes. We need the fresh basil. We need some uh, zucchini, which you have grilled prior to this. We need caramelized onions, olive oil, and salt and pepper, right? And the butts, naturally. You want to allow the dough to come to room temperature before you even try to roll it out. If you buy the store-bought pizza dough, that's fine. Remove it from the package, flour it up, let it sit out on a plate, cover it in saran wrap just until it expands and it warms up and it's ready to go. Usually takes about 30 minutes or so for the dough to kind of come to room temperature and be ready to work with. Now, you want to light your grill. You want to heat it up, get it really hot. Use your grill brush to clean the grates and then turn the heat to medium. After you've gotten it really hot, turn the heat to medium. If you have a brush, quickly put uh, some uh, olive oil on it and brush the grate with the olive oil, right? Don't use a spray while the grill is on to, to spray the grates with oil. Not a smart idea. Now, flour the, uh, uh, the counter or, um, uh, so you can roll the dough. Now put flour on the pizza board and place the rolled out dough on the pizza board. Transfer it to the grill. That is right, just the dough. We've not added any ingredients yet. Once it's on the grill, do not move it around. Using tongs, check it once or twice when it starts to bubble. About three or four minutes. The bottom should be crispy with nice grill marks. Now, remove it and place it back on the pizza board, cooked side up. 
Now you're going to add your sliced tomatoes, your caramelized onions, your grilled zucchini, slices of fresh mutts, uh, whatever else you're putting on there. Right now you're going to return it to the grill. Once the cheese begins to melt, it should be done. Check it out with the tongs. Look underneath. Make sure you're not burning it. Remove it from the grill on the pizza peel. And at this point, if you want to add like fresh arugula to this, uh, you can and you know drizzle a little bit of olive oil on it uh, and uh, cut it with a pizza knife, right? So you want to cut it like you would with a pizza knife uh, and you want to cut and serve it. This is really, it. once you try pizza on the grill in the summertime, you'll be amazed at why you haven't tried it sooner. And like I said, when you're making pizza, you can make so many different things. You could make a pepperoni pizza on the grill. You could make peppers, onions, and mushrooms. You could make a sausage pizza. Just depends what you want. But the, but the, the, the way you cook the dough is what's important when you're making a pizza uh, outside on the grill. In any event, it's a, it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a good day. It's not so humid out today. It's a little bit cloudy, but it's not going to rain in any event. The day's about to get started. The week is just beginning. Until tomorrow, take good care.